Hey everybody, Mr. Eric here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've done a couple of videos up to this point on DAX and, and just my thoughts on if DAX in fact do matter. I mean, I think we can all agree that they matter to some extent, but kind of like how much has been my question and you know what, what kind of money is it worth spending on a DAC, um, you know, where, where you're not seeing a ton of, of diminishing returns. So today is part three of, of kind of this thought process. And really it comes down to more just my experience testing these things and playing with them and just see, seeing for myself what I, what I think. I mean, so your mileage may vary, but I, I still think it's valuable to kind of share experiences as, as people are trying to, descend, to, to decide how to spend their money in this hobby and kind of where to allocate things. So um, today uh, we're doing some pretty expensive DAX or on the more expensive side. So we've got uh, a couple of different ones. One is the Socris 321. I think that's how you're saying it. That's how you're supposed to say that. Okay, so one is the Socrus 321, and the other is the Shit Bifrost 2. So these are both R2R um, DAX, or you know, if you're talking shit, they call it multi bit, but I, I guess it's my understanding that it's pretty close to the same thing. I, I'm, not, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not super keen on all the technical stuff, but. Um, either way, they're supposed to be kind of a step above Delta, your typical Delta Sigma DAX. Now, in the past, what I've found for myself is that I do think there's a difference between DAX and um, I, I thought that of all the Delta Sigma DAX I tried, the SU-9 I, I did think was better than some of the other ones, but I didn't feel like it was by like a significant margin. And ultimately I ended up um, just using the the built-in DAC uh, that came with the Odyssey Deckard, which has kind of been my go-to amp for for the last several months, anyway. And and I didn't think there was a. I thought maybe the SU9 was better, but I didn't think it was worth. You know, I didn't think it was really worth it um, when I I liked the built-in DAC enough in the Deckard. So so um, the next step was. To, talk, to try like a Bifrost 2, honestly. Like, I read everywhere that everybody loves this thing. It's supposed to be, you know, an excellent DAC. And um, and then the Socrus is one that I've seen mentioned. People say it's good. Um, it's it's a cheaper way to get into R2R. So I got the Socrus for about three, I, I think 350. I'm not 100% sure. It was somewhere around there. And then the Bifrost 2 I bought for, I think, 550, I want to say, 550, somewhere around there. So both used like I always do. And um, so based on those prices, kind of how do I feel about these these stacks? All right, so let's, let's take a look at each model real quick. We can kind of go over like, you know, their IO and things like that. And then we'll start talking about sound. We'll start with the Socrus just because it's a pretty like simple setup so basically you've got you know a volume knob here which i do appreciate having you got kind of little leds along the front where you can um you know see just like what are you it, it's basically like what bit rate are you operating at and things like that and then you got a little input button here that you can click usb toss link rca and then you got a little filter button here so it does have a few different filters that you can go through similar to delta sigma dax you know um fast roll off hard roll off I, I don't know things like that on the back it's pretty simple setup here rca out toss link coax um you do have this kind of weird usb mode one two thing i i don't know that there's a whole lot with that i read the manual but i just left it on kind of the standard usb in power in off on on the back there so um the socrus is much more limited in in what it does as far as like what you can hook up to it and things just because you know you've only got the one set of rcas but you do get the volume control which is really nice and probably that's the biggest like gripe I have against the Bifrost 2 is just that it doesn't have any sort of volume control even though it's got a remote um but like honestly like what are you going to use this remote for to switch 
inputs when you're sitting on a couch or something. I don't know. It seems it seems weird. I don't know. Um, to me, it doesn't really make sense the remote without volume control. So uh, it has a remote, but how useful is it? I don't know. But anyway, let's look at the rest of the Bifrost. Um, typical shit design here. If you've used any of the, you know larger footprint shit products i mean you know what you're getting here as far as build quality it's definitely a step above their smaller stuff but kind of looks the same and and feels the same just a little bit heavier materials and things like that so you've got uh this is just your input select button on the front and then it just shows you what your uh what your selected is is all you got there on the back you got xlr out rca out and then you got you know coax um, toss link, USB in, on off switch over here, right? You do have the ability to do like some firmware updates and things like that. And then this uses just kind of your traditional, um, power cable setup, which I always appreciate that just because, you know, it's easy to get a replacement if you want. I forgot to mention the Socris uses like this little itty bitty wall wart style, uh, power cord. Okay, so maybe about five foot of cable with that, just so you know. And that's pretty much the IO here. So uh, I guess what it comes down to is it's a give or take with IO because I like that I've got the balance outs on the Bifrost, um, but I like the volume control on the Socris. Now, the interesting thing about the volume control on the Socris is like you can get it like quite loud with this but it starts to clip after a certain point which is strange to me that they let it even go up that high um i don't know why they would do that but either way um you don't have as much range there as you think you would just because it does start clipping as you get higher in the volume so i don't know i thought that was a little bit strange but all in all i mean it, it works fine both units are very well built. Um, the Socris is very lightweight and small compared to the Bifrost, obviously, um, but still feels like very solid. Um, and then of course these big shit products, they just feel like tanks. So, so definitely, um, I, I probably would prefer the build of the shit overall. Um, if I had to come down to it and just like the design of it, I like better, but but either way, that doesn't matter nearly as much as sound. So let's talk about sound. Now, I thought both of these DACs sounded quite good and had very good resolution, very good detail. Um, I, I would, you know, DACs are an interesting thing because instantly if, if you're switching from a known entity, so like my, my Deckard DAC, um, and I was ABing it against these, like it's really difficult to tell the differences if you're just a being quick i mean you can hear some slight differences but it doesn't seem that profound or um you know it, it seems pretty minimal at the time however if you give these DACs a little bit of time and you kind of let your ears adjust to what they can do then you go back to a different DAC, you start to kind of get the picture of of what the differences are and is it a huge like night and day difference? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. But I do think there is compared, certainly compared to the Deckard anyway, which is the one I had on hand while I was doing this. Um, I noticed a difference for sure in the amount of detail and clarity in both of these DACs compared to that one. So I would say that both of these DACs are a step up over something like your typical Delta Sigma or for me, it was is was uh, the built-in DAC of the Decker. They do present sound a little bit differently too, so I did notice a difference in sound between the two. Where I would say that the the Bifrost is a bit sharper, has a bit more clarity, especially in like the center image. I'm gonna go kind of with a photography analogy here. If you if you've ever watched like a review of a of a camera lens, um, you know, they'll talk about sharpness and they'll talk about like center sharpness versus like sharpness in the corners. And this is where I think these, these DACs kind of um, are different here in that I feel that the Bifrost has a very, very, very clear, precise center. And, you know, and then you've got kind of the stuff on the periphery, which still is detailed, but doesn't retain the same amount of like focus and clarity as as the center focus 
The Socrus, on the other hand, I feel like has a little bit less clarity, but it maintains that to like the edges. So I felt like kind of all those little details on the periphery stood out to me more and I could pick them out more clearly on the Socrus and they were more present in the mixes. Whereas the Bifrost I thought had a super clear, precise sound um, for kind of the focus of the tracks. And I could still pick out the details and stuff on the edges, but it wasn't as pronounced as it was on the Socrus. Um, Ultimately for me, it came down to like, I just thought the Bifrost had such an incredible amount of, of clarity that that's the one that I prefer and I am going to keep the Bifrost. Um, so it's going to displace the uh, Deckard and which means I'm gonna be displacing the amp of the Deckard too. And we will talk more about that in future videos, but kind of my final thoughts on the DAC situation because it's it's honestly like I guess you know never say never I would have never thought I would have spent you know 500 some dollars on a DAC for the Bifrost um, but I really really think it's it's unlikely that I'll buy anything higher tier than the Bifrost for for a DAC um, so but never say never um, but ultimately what it comes down to is I do feel like DAX matter. Um, I think it's hard to argue that they don't. And I think anybody that's arguing that they don't, um, I don't know, one, I question like how many have they tried. Two, I'd question what gear are they using it with. And um, three, how much time have they spent with them? Is it huge? No. Um, I still believe personally that the most important steps in your chain should be headphones first that's i i think that is 100 percent true like get yourself a pair of headphones that you really like and play around with headphones as long as you've got an acceptable you know hundred dollar dac hundred dollar amp you know like a like an entry shit stack or or something along those lines once you have that play with headphones find the headphones you like then personally, I think play with amps and then play with DACs. Like I still think that holds true. I could see an argument for going headphones, then DAC, then amp. Um, but I, but again, I think you know finding the headphones that you like first and kind of playing around in that area is is where I would spend my money to begin with. Um, that being said. Again, I do think DACs matter. The Bifrost is an awesome, awesome DAC. Um, it's as good as everyone says it is. Whether you'll feel like it has the value to you know, make it in your system, that's gonna be based on a lot of factors, your own preferences, your own hearing, your own budget, things like that. But I, I can definitely say it's a good DAC, like no doubt about that and a step above, you know, my experience with Delta Sigmas. So yeah, Bifrost 2, that's gonna be my new deck. And um, like I said, that means I think my time with the Deckard is coming to a close. Uh, and so I'm kind of hunting for that next amp. And, you know, so stay tuned to the channel. If you want to hear more, you know, thoughts on headphone gear, I got, I got a lot of headphones to review on hand right now. I've got several interesting amps to review as well. So I will have those videos coming in the near future. Thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video.